One of my friends five years ago got into a relationship, a situation one might say, where they were enamored with this guy. They spoke to them all the time, and then after five months, they decided to move in with each other. Short amount of time, not a lot of time learning somebody. I don't recommend moving in by five months. That's talking about you people on the internet. Then I'm getting into a relationship very soon and very quick. You don't do that. That's ridiculous. Give it a three-month trial period. That's really how you want to operate. Give it a little time to simmer and see if you still like the person. Five months. Five months. Person move all the way across the state, move in with somebody. What happened after those five months? Well, the guy was horribly abusive. Ended up breaking a lot of her game systems, peed on the floor, destroyed everything around the entire vicinity. It was a mess. It was completely a mess. They are now unhappy with three children. Five years ago that happened. I think about that a lot. During that situation, they had approached me and told me and explained in vitriolic detail every single piece. They were lucid with their explanation. They said, oh, I can't take it anymore. He's abusive. He's mentally and verbally disgusting. What do I do, KK? What do I do? What do you do? What do you scooby dooby do? I'm trying to find the villain in this situation. I took the mask off and it looks like it's you as well. You are the construct. You are the architect of your own destruction. Break up with your partner. You can do that. Oh, I don't want to. Well, why would I break up with him? It's what? What? It, you don't understand what it's like to love somebody. You're right. In my entire life, I've never loved anything. As a matter of fact, I've had this pure apathy towards everything. I don't even like sweets or snacks or savory things. Every food has been a literally just fueling my body. I haven't really enjoyed anything in my entire life. I've never loved a single thing. Your unique experience is unique only to you and nobody else knows what you're going through because only you know the minutia of the situation, right? That's realistic. Break up with your partner. I mean this in my whole soul and my whole chest. I mean this as a chest burster coming out like Alien V Predator. I need you to break up with your partner because if you're in a situation you don't want to be in, you can just leave. Oh, but I live with him. And the rent is split half, half. Nope. Nope. Figure out low income housing. Do something else. There's always a solution. There's always something else. I was in an unhappy situation for quite some time. Oh, it was horrible. And I thought to myself, well, I'll tell you this much. I, I can't leave. Because that was my defeatist speaking in my brain. Because half the bills were split. And I thought to myself, well, if my finances were better, I would leave. So my finances stayed the same. My finances stayed the same and things changed when my pinky broke. My pinky broke upon living with my partner because they broke it. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to figure out low-income housing. I figured out low-income housing, applied for food stamps, and guess what? I got out of there. I built myself up away from the situation. I got out of there. That is the amazing point of it. I hit up my parents and they hated me. They wouldn't let me live with them. Hit up my grandparents, wouldn't let me live with them. I was out of options. That's what happens. One time, when I was the frail and tender age of 22, I had decided, you know what? I'm gonna leave and be homeless. That's what I decided. I'm gonna leave and be homeless. So I decided to just wander the streets, be homeless. No, nothing to my name besides the stank on my drawers and my wife beater shirt. That's all I had. And it was winter outside. I didn't have a coat, didn't have anything. And I decided to be homeless. I had made that conscious decision because the situation was so abusive. And you know what's beautiful about being homeless? I didn't have any bills. I didn't have a phone bill. I didn't have a job. It was just me in the streets, in the snow, horrible, disgusting, evil, wicked snow that seemed like it was out for me in this specific instance. I don't know why, but I left because you have the option always to leave your partner. Even if you're living with somebody on a lease, you can still break up with them. Did you know that? What are they going to do? Violate the lease? They're going to leave? Is your house too? Make the situation way worse. Make them go through the stress of it. Oh, I'm scared they're going to strike me. Call the cops. I don't want to put them in prison. That's too bad. You're weak. Grow up. Grow up. You're getting destroyed. You're getting annihilated. You're getting mentally and physically abused. You're hurting yourself. Every instance that you further prolong this messed up way you think your mind should work, every moment you have this happen to you, you're ruining your life. You're ruining it for people around you too. The people that actually care about you don't want to see you do better. And you're blaming them saying they don't know the situation. They don't know what's going on. They don't know because you're leaving out details. You're leaving out small fine-tuned details that make this situation easier. That you could actively go to understand and help the person understand. But you refuse. You refuse to allow yourself to be vulnerable. and Allow that eccentric core to show for two seconds because you're scared of yourself. You're scared. Break up 
with your partner if you are unhappy in this situation. There is no universe in which I'm doing something that makes me unhappy. If I'm bored, I'm leaving. If I'm ha having a good time at the party, I'm leaving. If I hate the food, I'm telling the chef and making sure that he thinks about it at night and has a horrible day afterwards. If the server messes up and just drops and fills the food, that's okay. Servers mess up drops of the food. They have a lot of people in their serving. I understand that. However, if you are in a situation in which you think you can't leave, that is defeatist talking. That is defeatism. I'm looking at you deeply in the eyes. I'm looking at you right now. I want you. I want to get close with you. I want to get close. I want to look in the eyes. You are the architect of your own failures. You are allowing yourself to be destroyed and defeated by the fact that you think you belong in a situation because you are unworthy of anything besides the bare minimum. It's not even the bare minimum you're receiving. You know what you're receiving? Hate, anger, vitriol. You're receiving somebody that doesn't know how to deal with their emotions. They're not emotionally mature, emotionally complex. If you're a man in the situation, you can leave. If you're a woman in the situation, you can leave. If you're non-binary, you can leave. If you're polyamorous and don't like your polycule, you can leave. You have the option, the freedom, the ability, the choice within yourself to leave the situation. And every time you tell me or yourself or your friends that you can't leave, you have decided immediately that you are not worth yourself. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe that you have the ability to exit the situation. I'm going to let you look at the blank background for a moment without me. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes for a moment. I want you to tell yourself right now. I want you to look deep inside of your soul. I want you to sit and meditate on this if you could for a moment. When did my hesitation become a full stop? When did the moment where I decided in my soul, in my heart, in my body that I was not worthy of even love? When did I decide that? When did I decide that I will stay in this horrible abusive situation that I will fix somebody when I myself need the most fixing? Hurt people hurt people. You can't fix something that is disgustingly broken. You can't make sure something is great. You can't fix a human. You can't do that. You can't change somebody unless they want to be changed. And if you think that just by showing them love and acceptance, it will change them, you are enabling them. You are enabling them. Now, open your eyes. I need you to look at me for a moment. I was abusive, emotionally and mentally. And every time they allowed me back into their walls, allowed me back into their mind, I thought I could just do nothing else but do the same exact thing again because I did it before and they stayed. And they said things have to change. Why did you come back? I kept doing it over and over again. Why did you come back? I kept doing it over and over again. Why did you come back? I was testing to see the upper limits to see if where they would actually leave. And they never did. They never did. One day I just left. I found someone else. I broke up with them. They were so relieved. They were so relieved. They were so happy that I broke up with them. Well, I don't know why they were so happy because they couldn't do it themselves. Abusers don't care. Most abusers are not going to feel remorseful for their actions. You're looking for some closure afterwards. Do you feel bad about your action? No, they don't. They're going to say they did, and they won't. With their whole soul and chest, they will lie to you. They will cry to you. They will break down the walls of Jericho. They will annihilate everything in the vicinity. They'll break their own thing. They'll ruin their own hand. They'll quit their job. They'll leave work. And guess what? They don't care. And it seems like these big displays, these big nonsense, them yelling seems like an expression of emotion, but that's manipulation. And if you're being manipulated by a showmanship, if you're being manipulated by entrepreneurship, by a weasel, love yourself more. Do better. Break past it. Break up with your partner. Break up with the person destroying your life. Do that. I am so proud of you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.